and Summer Nilsson, the best. What's up, fam? How are we doing? Make some noise if you're excited to be here tonight. I'm excited to be here. You can be seated. Hey, can we, um, can we honor Pastor Serena and George really quick? We love y'all. Um, special leaders. You know, this is the best time to be a part of LYA. It's the best time to be a part of what God is doing here in the young adult ministry at Lakewood. Uh, real quick, once again, if this is your first time here, can you raise your hand? If this is your first time here, can we shout and scream again for all of our first time guests? Thanks for coming. Um, as, as Pastor Serena mentioned, this is such a critical season of your life. And, you know, not to go so heavy from the jump, but the enemy would love to distract you during this critical season of your life and get you off track and get you um, derailed or distracted. Um, you're deciding what your purpose is, what your job's going to be, career, where you're going to live. You're making critical relationship decisions. And the enemy would love to distract you during this period of time because it can really set you back for years. But the fact that you're choosing to be here tonight and you're choosing to lean in and be a part of this movement, strengthen your faith, look to Jesus. Can you just clap for yourselves for being here and being a young adult that is trying. You're trying to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and growing your faith in some and I just wanted to celebrate you for being a part of LYA for such a time as this. Um, so we're going um, to encourage you tonight with some things that we've learned in our journey. Um, we're going to share a little bit of our story um, and we just believe it'll encourage you. You know, we've, we've learned a lot and we are learning things, but we think it's important for you guys to hear our story. Is that okay? Just a little overview of how we became a thing. Is that all right? It wasn't a dating show like these two that we just saw. So you want to share? I'll do it bit? quick because Nick goes, babe, you tell it, but not too many details because I love details, but I won't go that long. But I was a sophomore in college when this girl approached me. It was a sister of a friend of his that he was interning with. So we were serving in the youth ministry at the time. So I was a sophomore in college. He was graduating college. Um, but actually, when I was a sophomore in high school, I did see him when he gave his heart to the Lord. So that was really cool. So I got to see him for many years. I didn't grow up in church. Yeah. You know, I, got, I gave my life to Christ when I was 17. And she and was, I was already. Like, but I remember seeing him. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, ooh, he's good looking and he loves the Lord. I'm like, praise the Lord. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so the girl approached me and was like, I was a sophomore in college at this point, and she's like, oh, would you ever be interested, you know, in Nick? And I was like, is that a question? And so then she went and talked to him, and then we started dating. Um, that was in 2000, no, 2002. That was in 2002. And so, yeah, I mean, eight months later, we got engaged. Um, a year and four months after that, we got married. I wanted to finish college or else we probably would have gotten married earlier. But that's pretty much our story. And now we have two kids, one 16-year-old daughter, Haven, and a 12-year-old son, Denver. But yeah, Haven, that's Haven's good, just got her license. Yes. So y'all pray for us and I'll pray for you <laughs> as you drive on the streets of Houston along with our daughter, Haven. Um, so married what, 19 years? 19 no, 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 years? No, not yet. Not? June is 19. June will be 19 years. June yes, will be 19 eight, yes. years. June okay. 19. So that gives you kind of like some foundational, you know, context of where we're kind of pulling some of these thoughts from. Uh, it's, been an, it's been an up and down journey. Um, but the biggest thing we wanted to say is we are still trying to apply these things we're going to talk about. All right. So we're going to talk about three key things that we've learned. So if you want to take notes, feel free to pull out your phones, do so. If you don't want to, that's on you. It's whatever. But the first point, the first thing we wanted to throw to you is, number one, seek wise counsel. Seek wise counsel. Proverbs eleven fourteen 14 says, where there is a multitude, everybody say multitude. Where there is a multitude of counselors, there is safety. And so I, I would propose to you to start thinking about who are the people in your life that you trust, that you know have your best in mind, 
that you go to for relational advice? What people are you going to for wisdom, for their opinion, for their perspective? Um, it's important for you to select a few people that you trust to be honest with you. I'll give you a, I'll give you a story. When I was in college, me and, uh, me, and, me and Summer were not dating. I was in a relationship before I met Summer. And we had been dating for about six months and I was in college and towards the end of the relationship, it got rocky and it was emotionally exhausting. We were constantly fighting. We just got to the place where we were like, this ain't working out. So we mutually agreed like, let's end this relationship. It's not going anywhere. And we were believers and we were trying to do it right, but it just wasn't working, right? So we broke up and I remember going to my guy, right? This is like an hour after we broke up and I go to Sean and I, I'm like, hey, me and Sarah just broke up. I'm like, it, it's been a long, dramatic, like, unfolding, but it needed to happen. We broke up. And he looks at me, y'all, and he goes, I don't know what you were doing with her in the first place. I'm well, like, man. what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, how come you never told me this? Like this whole time we've been dating for six months, you're supposed to be my guy, and you never said anything about your, like you, it's, it's, it's not working out, you're not feeling it. And he's like, well, dude, you never asked me. You never asked me for my honest feedback. And I remember that like it was yesterday, because it was a God moment for me where I learned a lesson. You see, I, let me encourage you with this. Give someone a life jacket for you. And what I mean by that is it's not easy for people who love you to be brutally honest when it's difficult. That's hard for Sean to look at me four months in when I'm loving this girl and he's like, this, this ain't right for him. Like, I know Nick and I, I'm seeing from my perspective, this isn't a good look. This isn't going to work. It's hard for him to come and kind of crush where we're at, right? But if I had given him permission and said, look, I need you to tell me <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm in a relationship that's not best or you don't think it's fit, I know you love me. I know you have a God perspective. I know you know where I'm headed. Like I'm giving you a life jacket, <laughs> right? To throw to me, to save me from me. Does that make sense? You need to have people who can help you because we all have blind spots and we need a diverse, the Bible says a multitude of counselors, not one BFF. And we just talk about everything. Oh, they know me, Nick. They know me so well. They know, no, a multitude, not just one person that you go, that's the only person I'm going to listen to. The Bible says a multitude of counselors. There is safety in that. And so my question, I guess, to you is, who can you give a life jacket to today? Later tonight? Who can you text? Who can you say, look, I need you to be brutally honest with me. And it's not even about just who you're, who you're hooking up with dating-wise. or who you in a, It's about relationships, friendships in general. It's just you can get into a bad business relationship. But if you've given someone permission, someone could have discernment and be in your life and go, hey, I know you think that's a thing, but I'm sensing this about that dude, and I don't think it's good. I don't think it's healthy for where you're going. So give someone a life jacket that can save you from you. You cool? You got it? Good. Cool. All right. That's awesome. Okay, second point that we want to hit on is being content and secure. It's about being happy, content, secure, whole. It's all these things. And that's why in the beginning when I, I laugh and I say, oh, he was hot. Obviously, that first attracted me to him. But there was a whole lot more that went into it. Because I saw him over a period of actually several years, and I got to see him as how he treated people, how he loved people, how he had, like, you could see, like, his walk with Jesus, and you could see, like, how he was humble, and, and he was compassionate, and he was this person that I knew was, like, whole. And when I say whole, it's, he wasn't looking to other people to make him whole. He was whole in Jesus already, and that really attracted me um, to him, and I know he could say that about I me too. definitely right, say the same thing about her. <laughs> but her that, smile was hot though. The you, smile has got me. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, she's content. She ain't flirtatious. She knows who she is. And it was like, okay. okay. All right. No, no, no. no. 
But anyways, but it's time with Jesus that does it. So this is a, this is a point in here is don't put the pressure of making you happy on somebody else. Don't put that pressure on anybody else. It could even be a friend. It could be a dating relationship. It could be marriage. Don't put that pressure on somebody else because that's an unrealistic expectation. If I'm looking to Nick and if I'm unhappy about something, if I'm just discontent in my life because I'm wrestling with something, so I just look immediately to him and I'm like, you need to take care of me. You're not saying this enough. You're not saying I'm beautiful enough. You're not saying, I can look to him nonstop and just get aggravated, right? And just get annoyed because in my life, I'm not content. I'm not happy. And that's not his fault. <laughs> that's mine. Like, and I need to bring that to Jesus. I can't tell you how many times he's probably grateful that I've gone back to my time with Jesus and been like, God, I need to be like happy or joyful. Like I know like I'm feeling stressed, you know, I'm feeling like anxious and I can't just keep looking to him. Cause I will tell you one thing, I don't know if it's just a girl thing, I can speak for girls, but I can get really naggy and irritating if I'm not spending enough time with Jesus to make me whole and content, right babe? No, you're no, awesome, no, you're no, not, be... never nagging, you're never <laughs> nagging. But we can both like end up frustrated, you know, in this relationship. And I can't live for approval. Like, I have to live from approval. Like, God has approved me. God has told me all these things about myself, and I just need to go to my creator. He's the one that knows me, and he's going to be able to give me everything that I need. Yes, he is an amazing husband and encourages me, and yes, he makes me happy. But he's not what makes me happy. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, the other thing, we can't look to our partners to complete us, but they should compliment us. He's like the frosting on my cake. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what kind of frosting? Well, I don't know. I'm not a big frosting Like cream person. cheese, chocolate, cre it's vanilla. Be cream cheese. You know what I mean? I do not Oreo. like sugary. <laughs> yes, right. or sure. All right. I don't know, I'm trying to think of something it's I okay. really like. It's maybe, okay. Maybe it's okay. I like whipped cream more. Whipped cream. Yeah, all right. Now yes, we're talking. There you go, babe. I like that. Okay, that went another turn. Okay. <laughs> Bring it back. Um, but we all come into relationships with strengths, with different strengths that we bring in, and obviously we bring in weaknesses. Yeah. But if I'm um, looking to him, like, irritated at him through his weaknesses because it's a strength for me, it comes easy to me, then I become irritated and I get short with him, and I'm like, I can't believe you don't know this by now. Like, I like this. Why are you not doing this right, right? I could get irritated, but what I've learned is, is that he has so many amazing strengths that, my, that he helps me and strengthens me and sharpens me. And I can look to him then and be grateful and be like grateful to Jesus. I think of it like we gave each other this cute little card for Valentine's Day, which I had an inside thing because we have been doing puzzles together. But I loved it because... Um, Don't hate on puzzles. Some of you are already judging me for doing puzzles. <laughs> I like puzzles. They're not just for old people, okay? <laughs> puzzles are cool. It's a new trend. It'll, people will be on that wave in like two weeks. Watch. Puzzles. Mark my words. OMG. Okay. So anyways, uh, but when I was thinking about this, I was like, babe, like we do fit. Like this card was so cheesy. But I was like... It's crazy, though, how God, like, put us together. And that's, like, what God obviously can do with you and maybe he has done with you. Is God, like, he, he has, like, these different things and attributes that God knew I needed to have in my life. Which I thought when we first started dating and getting married, you were wrong a lot of the time. I was right. Get on board. Like, you need, I need to change you. Yeah. You're not seeing things right I have the best perspective. I'm sounding horrible right now. <laughs> but, but honestly, I was like, no, I'm the planner. Like, I'm the organizer. Let's go. Like, we're going to get this. You need to just learn to do this. But I've realized, like, God was like, hold up. I didn't make him that way. Stop trying to change him and try to make him like you. Like, I put you guys together to complement one another, to bring each other, like, to bring his strengths, your strengths together. I don't know. I just thought that really helped. And I became a student. Like, I became, if you can learn 
your partner, if you can study them, if you can be unselfish and say what is best for him, what is best for her, like that I think is what really helped. I can tell if I'm, I'm a talker, if I want to talk his ear off, I'm going to annoy the mess out of him and frustrate him because he's going to try to want to fix my problems. But I don't have those problems. I just want to talk about it. Like I just want to get it out. So I've learned, like you said, is, like, <laughs> is, to, is to learn that about him. Um, be a good student. Um, uh, there was one more thing. Oh, yeah. I want to give the example, though. Um, this, this girl that's, like, in her 20s, I've been talking with her. She's been starting this dating relationship for the last several months. And it's just been fun to see because a lot of the things that I have learned, she is literally walking through. And trust me, I am still trying to walk those out as well. But she, like, her, her boyfriend went off um, to this business um, thing or whatever, and he travels some. And he's a go-getter. He is, like just a go-getter. And for her, that's a big deal. She loves that about him. She loves he's a hard worker and wants to get things done and is not just lazy and sitting around. And that's like a big rock for her, right? That's like something major, but she was proud of. But what's funny is, is something you can be proud of. You can also get frustrated because then maybe another area you're like, wait a minute, but I, my quality time, you're over here doing, I want some quality time. And so that was happening, and she was, when he would leave, she would get so frustrated because he's, like, so busy and on the road and going. He wasn't texting. He was leaving her undelivered, I guess, whatever that means. I'm needing to keep up with this stuff. And, like, all this stuff. But I was like, well, what did you say to him? And she goes, I shut my mouth. I encouraged him, just said, hey, I'm proud of you. I can't wait to see you when you get home. And I was like. I was like, you go, girl, because I know that's so old. Don't say you go, girl. I was so proud of her, though, because normally I would be, if I were her, I'd be nagging and being like, why are you not texting me back? Why are you leaving me undelivered? What is up? Like, come on. But she didn't. Like, she has grown so much, and she realized, she's like, you know what? I stopped, and I thought, you know what? I'm proud of him. Like, everything that he's doing, I'm just so proud, and I know he is so happy. And when we get back, I'm going to get my quality time. It's things like that where she is learning to not be the nag. To, she's learned, like, her partner, all those things. But, yeah, so awesome. It's good. Number three. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for number three? Chase your purpose, not a partner. Chase your purpose, not a partner. All right, this is a big one. And listen, I'm not, thank you, boss. I'm not anti-dating site guy. I'm not like, don't try to like date and do all that. Like I gave you an example from the jump of a, of a relationship that I was in before summer. And she was in relationships before we met. And you learn from them. Um, hopefully this content that you've learned all month you can begin to apply and it can save you a lot of heartache and a lot of drama that's unnecessary. But the key to me is, and the thing we've learned, is the more you're consumed with, with chasing after your purpose, investing your time in becoming the person God wants you to become, then naturally God has this unique way of matching who he wants for you to you. And a lot of people are just so fixated on, I got to find the right person. Who's the right person? And that's number one on the agenda. And we're so obsessed with that. But God might be wanting you to spend more time on becoming the right person versus finding the right person. So right now, it's this space that you have, this beautiful opportunity as a young adult to go, all right, God, what have you designed me to do? What's my purpose? What are my strengths? What things do you want me to explore? What things do you want me to try? What adventures do you want me to go on? What can I discover about myself, about what you've called me to do, about the world? You have a window of time as a young adult to do some amazing discovery about yourself and about the world. But if you're so fixated on, I got to find a person, I got to find a person, I got to find a person, you're missing so much opportunity that God's put before you to grow to learn, to expand your gifts, to Im like immerse your time in investing into people, investing into opportunities that God brings your way. There's just so much that God wants. It's why I believe one of the big reasons Paul says in the New Testament, I wish you all were single. That's in the Bible. And you know why he's saying that? One of the key reasons is there's so much growth opportunity that God's put before you when you're single. To grow in your security, 
to grow in unselfishness, to grow in creativity, to grow in your gifts, to sharpen your talents, to do so many amazing things. And it's, it's critical that you seize that opportunity because there comes a point in time where you make a decision to get into a relationship. And when you make that decision to get into a relationship, no matter how you look at it, you are bonding yourself with someone emotionally, right? You, you are stepping into an emotional exchange. And that takes from you. That, that pulls from you. That takes attention. Are you with me? And Paul says this. If you're writing scriptures down, I want you to take this one down. Because 2 Corinthians 6.14, this is what he says. Do not be unequally bound or yoked together with unbelievers. Another translation says, do not make mismatched alliances. Ooh, I like that. I like that translation. Because it, it's, it's bigger than just an unbeliever or a believer. Don't make mismatched alliances. Because every time you choose to yoke up with someone, now, when that text, when you read that text, the word yoke to the original audience, that yoke is referred to when they would take two animals, they would yoke them together with a yoke. They would put a yoke across the animal like this, right? And they were used to plow. These animals would, would cultivate the ground. So a yoke represented cultivation, production, work, fruitfulness, something flourishing, right? A purpose. So when, when, when Paul says, do not get yoked up, he's saying, don't, don't make an alliance with someone. Don't come into a committed relationship with someone that is not on purpose like you are. Because what can happen when you're yoked up? Like, for example, these, these listeners, when they, would, when they would yoke up a strong ox with a weaker ox, I'm not saying you're the weaker one. I'm saying a strong ox to a weaker ox. <laughs> ox is probably a horrible word, too, to use right now. But anyways, um, when they would pair up, if one was stronger than the other, they would cause conflict, Right? Or if one gets stuck, if one isn't going in the same direction, what can happen? This ox, what, what, they're supposed to be plowing ground, but what's happening? They're going in circles, right? Or one's pulling this way and the other's trying to stay put. And that can happen in relationships when you're in a mismatched alliance. You may not see it right away, but there's a reason you're stuck, there's a reason there's drama. There's a reason, like, I, I don't know how many relationships we've seen where it just feels like they're going in circles. Why? Because they're not aligned. Their purpose aren't aligned. They don't have the same vision after God's plan for their life. They're off a little bit. And that's why for her and I, it's important that we look face-to-face -face throughout seasons of our marriage and make sure we're going in the same direction. Because if I'm going this way and she's going that way, we're not going to be effective in the way that God's designed us to be. Are you with me? Yeah. It's important that you yoke up with people that are going in the same direction as you. I see a lot of people yoking up with people and they're like, I want to go to church. Well, she don't want to go to church. He wants to go to church, she doesn't. She wants to go to church, he doesn't. And what happens is, is they're at a standstill. And they can't go anywhere or they're going in circles because one isn't on the same page as the other. So it's about communication. It's about finding things out before you come into that relationship. And this can apply to friendships. I'm talking, it's mismatched alliances in general. That's why relationships are so important. Now, when you yoke up with someone who is going in the same direction, oh man, there is so much amazing things that can happen. When you yoke up with someone that is going after Jesus, you're going in the same direction, you, for the most part, have the same things and in, 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 in dreaming of the same things, and you guys go, hey, we want to serve people. We want to be planted in the house. We want to grow in our faith. We want everything that God wants us. Like, when you are mutually agreeing on 90% of the things, it's amazing how the relationship can flourish. Chase your purpose. And God will bring your partner. When, when Summer and I were chasing our purpose, it's like if, if you look at the, the center of, in between us, let's say it's just this water bottle, okay? And Summer, if you could stand one more time for me, I'm going to close with this thought. 
If, if that's our purpose, if that's we're chasing God and we're both taking steps towards our purpose, as you're serving God and serving him as a young adult and you keep serving and you keep serving, all of a sudden you look over and you're like, oh, hey, hey. And a lot of people do this. A lot of people do this. They just, they're just like, they're just, they're, but if you, hey, I'm going to fixate on God, growing in my faith, my identity, my security, growing in my gifts, staying planted. God's time is going to be perfect. God's time is going to be perfect. Chase your purpose and once in a while, look beside you. Oh, and God wants to bless you with that. God will bring someone unique and special into your life. Can you stand to your feet with me tonight? We want to pray for you. Are you taking some things away that encourage you, help you in your relationships? Come on, let me hear you. Is it helping you? I know this month there's been a plethora of wisdom, plethora of relational wisdom that's been given. Do whatever you can to go back, somehow watch messages, gather the content from Pastor Serena and George and the rest of the crew. But tonight, I don't believe you're here by accident. Maybe it was one, one thing we said, one verse something Summer said that maybe could apply and change the trajectory of this next chapter of your life as a young adult. And that's, that's really what we're praying and believing for.